Greetings, viewers. Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another, well, I guess I can't really call this a repair video. I'm gonna call it an informational video. Not so much an infomercial, because I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm just trying to perhaps put out a little bit of information that might be useful to you at some point in time. Today's topic, thermostats. Now, thermostats perform a very important function in your engine. Uh, more important than a lot of people, I think, realize. Thermostats can make or break your day in many ways. Now, most of you know of a couple of the most common failures of thermostats. In fact, there are really just two things that can happen. One, the thermostat itself can remain closed. And if it remains closed and does not allow coolant to circulate through the radiator, well, then you get an overheat situation. The other type of failure is that it gets stuck in the open position. If it's stuck in the open position, then maybe you never really get heat. Your engine never comes up to temperature. And, well, that can also cause all kinds of other problems. In fact, uh, I know some people or some people have said to me that they've removed the thermostat from their vehicle and just went on their merry way. This is the exact wrong thing to do, particularly on a modern vehicle. Uh, fuel injection systems are super dependent on engine temperature. Uh, when they reach a certain temperature, uh, operating temperature is usually somewhere around 200 degrees, let's say. We'll just throw that out there. The engine management system tends to monitor its own fuel consumption and it doesn't do that until it reaches that operating temperature when it does reach that temperature or and does go into what is referred to as closed loop uh, it monitors its own emissions it also monitors its fuel consumption and tries to give it the best fuel economy possible if you remove the thermostat which is in essence the gatekeeper of the cooling system if you remove the thermostat, what happens is you have unregulated coolant flow through the whole system. And what this causes is the engine is never really up to temperature. In fact, temperature tends to fluctuate a great deal without a thermostat uh, in the engine. And as I said, can cause problems with fuel economy. So I strongly recommend you run a thermostat in your vehicle and don't run without a thermostat. Even if you're in a warmer climate where you feel, ah, I don't need uh, any heat or anything like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that thermostat and forget about it. Not necessarily a good idea. Let's uh, head over to the bench and we'll talk a little bit about the operation of the thermostat and its parts. Okay, here's a little bit of a closer view of the thermostat. This one is out of a Honda. Um, and let's talk a little bit about these parts. Uh, the first thing I'm looking at is this little piece right here. This is, this is actually an air bleed. Uh, when the thermostat is closed when you first start it up, there is no way for air to circulate through the radiator, so it makes it very difficult to purge air from a cooling system um, with, without this uh, little valve here. So this helps air pass through here while the thermostat is closed, so that, say for instance, if you are bleeding a cooling system, which I'll post a link to the, in the description of how to do that and why that's important, so that will help aid you in that circumstance. And uh, just a note, if you have one of these, and not all thermostats have these, uh, if you do have one of these, because it is an air bleed, make sure you install it towards the top when you install it into the engine. Because uh, if you install it on the bottom, you're sort of defeating the purpose because the air will rise to the highest part of the system. Next, let's talk a little bit about the parts of the thermostat. You see a giant spring here, and that actually helps keep the valve closed. You can see around the outside here, there's this little, little truss that uh, helps give that some stability. But that actually helps close the thermostat. Now, what actually opens the thermostat is this little, uh, well, I guess that's copper on the inside there. Sometimes it's made out of brass or some other material, but it's usually filled with uh, a charge, like perhaps a paraffin wax, which uh, expands as it gets warmer. And as that expands, that forces the thermostat to open up. And as it opens up, it uh, allows coolant to flow through. Now there's two things that happen when that happens. Now when the thermostat is closed like this, you might be wondering what this piece back here is for. This piece back here helps close off the bypass. As the thermostat is closed, you still need coolant to circulate through the cooling system, uh, mainly through the engine block. So what that does is, as, the, as it's closed, coolant can pass through here and still circulate through the engine block and not through the radiator. It's only when the thermostat opens up that it allows coolant to circulate through the radiator to be cooled. But there is a time during warm-up where that's not necessarily required. So as this opens up, this part of the thermostat actually goes against the housing and closes off the bypass in the back of, well, could be the cylinder head, could be the engine block, it could be another, uh, as in the case of the Civic, there's a separate uh, 
thermostat housing that comes off of the, the back of the engine block. And that's what this does. It helps block that off. So as the engine is cold with the thermostat closed, you have circulation through the block. As it warms up and the thermostat opens, this closes off the bypass and allows the coolant to circulate through the radiator to be cooled. Now let's take this a step further. I'm going to show you how to check to see if your thermostat is opening properly. Um, one of the things that you'll note on the outside here is there is a temperature stamped on the outside there. In this case, uh, that is 82C, which would be 82 degrees Celsius, uh, which equates to about uh, 179 point whatever degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I know this because I looked it up on my iPhone app. But that's the uh, temperature that the therm thermostat should be open. So uh, your thermostat may vary, but it should have a temperature stamped on the outside of it. So we're going to put this in water that's heated up to that temperature and it should open up. Now I'm going to add another wrinkle into this and then I have an aftermarket thermostat for the same vehicle here. Now I've always advocated that original equipment, which is here on the left, thermostats are better than aftermarket thermostats. <laughs> a thermostat is better than no thermostat. So if you can only afford an aftermarket, get an aftermarket. But uh, if you are interested in getting all you can out of your thermostat, I personally recommend original equipment thermostats. As you can see, the construction is very different in these two things. They're the same size, but the materials that they're made from, and also you can see there's less of them, there's less of the spring here. Um, and I'm going to see if that has any bearing on how the thermostat itself operates. So we're going to put it to the test and see if I'm right about it or not. Here we have a nice little tin to heat this up in. You can use, uh, you know, just re your regular cookware. You can use a pot, whatever. You just need to be able to have something that you can heat up to the uh, temperature that, as I said, was printed on here. And so we're looking for about 180 degrees uh, in this case for this thermostat. Now this isn't the best choice, uh, mainly that you can see because it's actually leaking onto that seam but I think it will work for our purposes. I've also used it in the past for this. That's what all the burn marks are on the bottom here. And I also found that heating it up with my propane torch uh, just didn't do the job. <laughs> so I'm going to use oxyacetylene. Anyway, here's our baseline. Uh, looks like today uh, it's just a hair under 50 degrees. And I'm going to put that right there. But I'm also going to go uh, with the infrared so that we can uh, try it out there. And this says uh, 44 degrees. Here we have the uh, original equipment thermostat. And next to it, we're going to place the aftermarket thermostat. And I'm going to continue to heat the water until we get up to 180 degrees, look to see if they open up. And uh, well, we'll take it from there. And you also, if, if you use like a, a pot that's really deep or something like that, you, you don't want to use your fingers to take the stuff out of there. So. Um, you can use a pair of pliers such as this, or you can tie a piece of wire around it or something like that and submerge it. But mainly what you're trying to do is you're trying to verify its operation. You want to make sure that it opens up at the proper temperature and it can close fully. Uh, if it can do those two things, you're good. I mean, I realize that thermostats are not that expensive, and if you're going to go through the time and, ex and effort to remove it from the engine, you're likely going to replace it. But if you want to know if that's actually what your problem is, this will tell you that. Also, I can say that for the most part, many, many, many cooling system problems are the result of air in the cooling system. So please check for that. The way to, to check for that is in that video, I post a link in the description to of how to bleed a cooling system. We'll keep an eye on the temperature as we go. Now water's very good at conducting heat. Some people think that running 100% coolant is the way to go in your cooling system in some cases. Actually, it's not. You're much better off running a mix of coolant and water. If you want to know what mix to use in your application, check on the back of the uh, antifreeze bottle because usually they list mixture proportions. It's normally 50-50, but in some cases you might need more protection and you might use a little more coolant. And I'm doing it this way inside of water instead of doing it uh, outside and just heating the thermostat up directly, mainly because the original equipment thermostat has a rubber seal on it. If you heat that up directly, that rubber seal will likely melt and that will suck. So I don't recommend heating them up directly. Plus, this is the real world. This is where they live. They live inside of basically hot water. Another thing to mention is that uh, your radiator cap has a lot to do with what temperature the water boils at. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit 
but actually at 99.98 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius for lack of a better word. If you put pressure on the system, you can actually raise the boiling point of the mixture. So in the case of the cooling system, for every pound of pressure that's listed on, the ca on your radiator cap, it raises the boiling point of the mix two degrees. So for every pound of pressure on there, that's, that's two degrees higher that that, that uh, mixture will boil at. So if you have, say, a 15-pound cap, that will raise the boiling point of that mixture 30 degrees. So instead of 212, it'll be 242. Should be opening them up any second. Yep, they both just opened up. We're about 190. But they're both open now. Okay, looks like 185. But here we have the original equipment thermostat, which you can see is open there. Let's uh, watch it as it cools. We can see it slowly start to close because that's exactly what it's supposed to do. It needs to close as well. Remember, a thermostat that's stuck open is uh, equally damaged, damaging as one that is stuck closed and causes an overheat. And we can see it closes up fairly quickly. That one's now just about closed. I can actually hear it closing up. Now let's uh, check to see if one it will open back up. But we can also check our aftermarket thermostat. You can see this one is very easily to see that that one's wide open, but that one's closing almost immediately. So it does act differently. Look how quickly that closed up. It's just about there right now. So this one closes up almost immediately. So the aftermarket thermostat does have some different characteristics, but as far as when it opened, it uh, opened at 180 degrees, just like it's supposed to. So it did that. This one opened back up slightly, but not that much. I'm assuming that uh, my water's cooled down quite a bit since then, since I stopped adding heat. Yeah, I'm at about 178, so I'm just, I'm just below the temperature threshold that these things are supposed to open up at. But yeah, the uh, aftermarket thermostat performed almost identical to the original equipment, but it, it certainly, it opened a lot faster and it closed a lot faster. So uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it did act differently. And that's, that's my point. It's not a bad thing to use an aftermarket thermostat, but they do have different characteristics than original equipment. Thermostats, the gatekeepers of the cooling system. Do you need them? Yes, you do need them. Uh, you can't just remove them and throw them away. When they're not working or you suspect that they're not working, you can throw them in a pot of boiling water of the given temperature uh, that's printed on the outside of the thermostat and it should open at that temperature and it should close up all the way completely. So if the thermostat is part way open when you remove it and it's below the threshold temperature, then you know that you have a faulty thermostat that's stuck open. Symptoms of that are probably your heat's not working all that great, something along that nature. Uh, and obviously if it's stuck closed, you'll go into an overheat situation. So the only other thing that I can think to mention aside from the fact that this blocks off and uh, allows the coolant to stay circulating through the engine when the engine's cold and blocks off the bypass when it warms up is that in addition to that, the input hose for your heater core is often positioned just behind the thermostat. Uh, that's so that that coolant begins to circulate through the heater, heater core almost immediately upon startup. That way you get heat inside the cabin as quickly as possible. So they designed the system that way. There's also heater control valves and those kinds of things. But, but normally the uh, input for the heater core on your system is taken somewhere from behind this thermostat. But most of the time, I will say that if you have cooling system problems, the first thing to do is check for air in the cooling system. Can't tell you how many times that has caused issues. Uh, with cooling systems, either overheats or your heat isn't working properly, uh, especially if you've just done a service, like you've replaced a radiator or perhaps a thermostat, uh, you need to be sure to purge the air from that system. 
Um, I've got, like I said, a video on that. I've also got, I'm also gonna have to do another video on how to uh, bleed one, a system with an expansion tank. Um, I should do one specifically on that because those are a little bit different. Anyway, that is thermostats for you. So I, I hope this information was useful to you. It may help you diagnose or fix a problem that you might have in your vehicle or perhaps someone you know. Anyway, uh, I am Eric the Car Guy. I can always be found 24 hours a day, seven days a week over at ericthecarguy.com where if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. Check out the welcome video that's there that explains to you all the wonderful options we have to help you solve said automotive issue. In fact, most of the questions I get can be answered just in the FAQ section when you uh, land right there on the homepage. Aside from that, if you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter, and I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, stay dirty, me and my thermostat, we'll see you later. Catch you next time.